Today, I'm going to show you some third-party apps that you have to have in Windows 11. Well, you don't actually have to have them, but you really should. Stay tuned. There are many programs that we interact with on a daily basis that we couldn't function without. These are the high profile apps like your word processor and your browser. However, there's also apps that we don't use very often, but having them saves us a tremendous amount of time. These might be apps that help us keep our PC running or maybe for troubleshooting problems. They could also be programs that change the functionality within Windows that we simply don't like. These are the apps that we're looking at today. But first, I gotta pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop with a valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So yes, today we're gonna to be looking at apps that don't get much use, but when we do use them, they make a huge difference. These are the programs that we use to customize the look of Windows or troubleshoot problems within Windows. These are the apps that we use to maintain our computer and they may not get ran very often, but their usefulness is not due to how often we use these programs, but how useful the programs are when we do need them. So let's jump on the system and we'll get started. All right, here we are in Windows 11. This is 23H2. So all the apps we're looking at today are pretty much going to be centered around 23H2. We're not really looking at the new update coming out. However, if there's any issues with the update with the apps that we're talking about, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about those during the video. However, there's really only one that might have some issues. But So the first thing we're looking at today is a program called Microsoft PC Manager. And this is essentially kind of Microsoft's answer to CCleaner. And personally, I think it's a good alternative, but let's go ahead and check it out. So to install it, you just go to this website and I'll go ahead and have the link in the description below and you click the download button. Now the download button is gonna open the Microsoft Store. However, the nice thing about this is it doesn't actually require a Microsoft account in order to install it, you can just install it right from the Microsoft Store by hitting the Get button and it'll do its thing. Go ahead and hit Yes to the User Account Control and it'll start installing the program. So some Microsoft Store programs require a Microsoft account and some don't. So luckily this is one that doesn't. So once it's installed, you can push Open. Go ahead and minimize this. And it might take a second and then once it opens, it looks just like that, it's a really simple little program. I'm not gonna go over this in too much detail because we have other apps to get into. However, you can go through and you can do different processes from within this thing, stuff, stuff that's a lot similar to the way CCleaner works. For instance, you can clean up your startup time or you can at least see what your startup time is and it'll tell you things that are recommended to leave on and if you have anything that takes a long time to start when the computer boots, it'll recommend disabling that. And then also it has disk cleanup functions functions and these things work real similar to the regular Windows disk cleanup. However, you can go through and you can delete a lot of temporary files and things of that nature. And you can choose which ones of these you delete too just by simply checking on the box in order to delete something. However, it doesn't have the recycle bin checked by default. That's a little unusual. However, we're gonna go ahead and go back right here, but there's lots of things in this thing that, that give you a similar functionality as CCleaner, and it's definitely worth checking out. Now, as I said before, Microsoft's PC Manager is a lot like CCleaner. However, the issue that I have with CCleaner isn't the traditional program itself, because as a program, to eliminate waste on your computer, like temporary files and different system caches, it works really well. 
My issue with CCleaner, and the reason why I don't recommend it, is the registry cleaner that comes with it. If you use the program and just don't touch the registry cleaner, then it works fine. And I would actually probably recommend it over this one here. However, there's been too many systems that I've seen destroyed because of registry cleaners. And the benefit to registry cleaners just isn't there. If you take two systems side by side, Everything in these systems is exactly the same, but the only difference is one of them has a perfectly pristine registry and the other one has the most cluttered and bloated registry possible. The performance difference between these two is negligible. Registry cleaners just aren't worth the risk because deleting the wrong key could render your computer unfixable. But with that said, Microsoft's PC Manager comes with a lot more than CCleaner comes with, and it's free. It's definitely worth checking out. Now, the next program that I'm gonna show you guys, I've covered on this channel before. In fact, I've covered this program several times because it happens to be one of my favorite programs for Windows 11. And that program is Explorer Patcher. Let's jump back on the computer and I'll show it to you. Okay, we can go ahead and close this right now. And then the next thing we're looking at here is Explorer Patcher. And this one is available on GitHub. You can go ahead and download it and install it on your system, play around with it yourself. So to download it, you just go over here to where it says releases and go ahead and grab the latest release. Click on that. Now it does have a lot of notes and we're gonna talk about some of these notes later because there are some kind of concerning things, especially stuff that's related to 24H2, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So to download it, you go down and download the executable right here. And then once it's downloaded, you just run it. And once you run it, it installs itself on the system. It's actually fairly easy to install. And once it's installed, it pretty much looks exactly the same as it did before. Your Windows 11 should function exactly the same. However, it does make a lot of changes within Windows. And to get to those changes, all you gotta do is right click on the start menu. And as you can see, you have a much different menu here. You just go on properties and this will open the, the Explorer Patcher properties. Now, what Explorer Patcher is for is, is essentially allows you to unlock hidden features within Windows 11. And most of that is kind of old code that was left in Windows 11 from Windows 10. So as you can see right now, the taskbar is set to Windows 11. However, we can change it to Windows 10 and then click Restart File Explorer. And when it restarts, you'll realize we have the old Windows 10 taskbar. However, when you click the Start button, it's still centered. But that's okay because you can go over to Start Menu and you can change that to Windows 10 as well. And you can also position it over at the edge of the screen. So once we go ahead and restart Explorer here, you'll see that now, we essentially have basically Windows 10. Now there's lots of different settings in here and I'm not gonna go into all of them in this video right here. However, just know that this program has a bunch of advanced options and a lot of stuff that you can do with it. If you'd like to have more information on it, then I would check out my last video that I did on this. I go into much better detail than this one is. Now, if you ever get tired of it and you wanna get rid of it, all you have to do is go ahead and click on Start open up your control panel, or you can do this in settings as well, but go ahead and click uninstall and then find Explorer Patcher on the list right here. And once you find it, click uninstall, hit yes, and it will remove it from your computer like it was never there. And then once it comes back to Windows, you'll see that it goes back to the Windows 11. Now it did leave me with an uncentered taskbar. So if you want to fix that, just go into taskbar settings, go into taskbar behaviors, then change it from left to center, and you'll have it back in the center again, like it was before. Now, here's the thing with Explorer Patcher. It's an incredible piece of software. The functionality changes the UI of Windows 11 in some really good ways. To be honest with you, I think this functionality should have come with Windows 11 in the first place. It's also free and open source piece of software that's written by just a dude just like you and me that just wants Windows 11 to work the way that he wants it to work. It's the best of both worlds. It's free and it's incredibly powerful. But unfortunately, that's also the reason for its biggest downside. And that is Explorer Patcher has a tendency to kind of be unstable sometimes. Now, I just showed you it working on the latest copy of Windows 11 23H2. 
and it's running pretty solid right now. However, from what I hear, Windows 11 24H2 will no longer allow you to revert to the Windows 10 taskbar. So if this is true, it removes one of the biggest benefits for Explorer Patcher. Now, the reason why this is, is because Microsoft has removed the old Windows 10 taskbar from the code base in Windows 11, at least in 24H2. Apparently, they really don't want people re-enabling it. However, after digging through the comment section on the GitHub page for Explorer Patcher, the developer has stated that the re-implementation of the Windows 10 taskbar has already been finished, but they're holding it back from releasing it at this time because they have some other problems that they're trying to deal with with 24H2. So, Hopefully, by the time 24H2 is released to the public, these problems will be resolved and Explorer Patcher will work as normal. But, at least for right now, it's still working fine in 23H2, and that's what's available anyway. However, in another couple of weeks, Windows could update, and it might break it again. And we'll have to wait a little bit for a fix. This is the downside with free programs that don't that have this much functionality. Personally, I think Microsoft should just work with this developer to integrate this program into Windows 11 once and for all. I mean, that's what we wanted from the very beginning anyway. But with that said, it's time to move on to the next program, and that program is an absolute necessity for people who enjoy gaming on Windows, because one important aspect of gaming is making sure that we get the most out of the expensive hardware that we buy for these gaming systems. The best way to do that is to keep our drivers updated. And the most important driver for a gaming system is our GPU driver. So, if you use an NVIDIA GPU, you need this next program. Let's jump back on the computer, and I'll show you what it is. Okay, so this next one we're looking at, this is another one that I've covered in the past. And it's a program called NV Clean Install, or NV Clean Install. I call it NV Clean Install, but you know, it is what it is. So to download it, you just click the download button on the website that I'll have linked down in the description below. And then essentially just pick a mirror, click on it, and go ahead and download the program. And once it's downloaded, you'll see that it'll be sitting in your downloads directory ready to run. Now this program is a really easy program to use. All you gotta do is launch it, say yes to your user account control, and then once it launches, it essentially tells you what your current driver is and what the best driver for your specific hardware. So it'll detect your hardware and tell you what the best driver is. Now, as you can see, my computer's driver is pretty outdated. I'm using 528.49 and the latest one is 560.7. Now, if you wanna go ahead and not install the latest version, but you have a specific version you want installed, you can actually manually select the driver by clicking here, and you can go through and install any version of the driver that you want, at least any version within reason. I could go all the way down to 471 if I wanted to. However, what you do is you essentially pick the driver that you want, and then go ahead and click next. And now next, it allows you to select which components of the driver to install. Now you could leave out all the GeForce Experience components if you want, and I do, personally. What I typically pick is I make sure the display driver obviously is selected, but you know, that's a given. But I will also select the PhysX as well as the HD audio over HDMI. Now, typically I won't install anything else. The USB-C driver I don't mess with, the Optimus I don't mess with, FrameView SDK I don't, and the Quadro view and also the Microsoft Visual C runtimes, I typically already have those installed, so I usually don't waste my time with it. So I'll usually check these top three and then hit next. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and download the installer from NVIDIA's website so you don't have to search for the website for the installer. That's one of the reasons why I think this program is so nice because it requires you to literally do nothing. You just leave this program sitting on your desktop or on or in a folder where you keep your tools and utilities for working on your system and then run it every once in a while and see if there's a driver update. And then once you run it, you can actually go through and modify that driver update so it just updates the parts of the driver that you want to install specifically. So once it gets through this, and it might take a second to get through this, it'll come to the next one. And this is essentially all the installa installation tweaks and stuff like that that you can make. Now, what I usually choose, and this doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way to do it, but this is the way I do it, is I perform a clean installation. I usually leave everything else unchecked except for show expert tweaks. And then I go down here and I will usually always turn on enable messel message signal interrupts is the MSI support for your driver. Now, most drivers are gonna do this by default anyway at this point. However, 
If yours doesn't, I would go ahead and check this and it'll force it into MSI mode. And then once you do that, you go ahead and hit next and then just push the install button and it will install the new driver. Now, there's not much else to say about NV Clean Install. It has a very basic job and it does it very well. So let's move on to our next app, which fixes a major annoyance for me in Windows 11. Now, if you're using Explorer Patcher, then it already fixes this annoyance. But if you're not, this is a standalone program that does just one thing. It restores the classic context menu in Windows 11. Let me show it to you. Let's jump back on the computer. Okay, so go ahead and close NV Clean Install because I don't want to update my driver right now and we can do that at any time. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and then the next thing is a Windows 11 classic context menu. Now, what this is, is it's a ridiculously simple app and I'm going to go and on the website here, it even shows you how to do this manually. So you don't actually need this app to do this, but the app definitely makes it a lot easier. So I like to keep this just sitting on my thumb drive because honestly, it's kind of nice to have around and it makes it easier so you don't have to go into the registry to do this if you don't want to. So go ahead and click the download link and I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below for this. And once it downloads, you can go ahead and open it up. From there, we're gonna go ahead and extract it to the same folder as fine. And then at this point, all we have to do is just launch the program. Now, as you can see, this program is extremely simple. It's just two buttons, essentially. But as you can see right now, if I right click, you'll see that I have the new Windows 11 context menu right here. Now, if I go through and I enable the Windows 11 classic context menu, I click here, ask me if I wanna restart Explorer. I say yes, and it goes ahead and does it. Now it goes and it detects right here which context menu you have enabled right in the app. So it says right now we have the classic context menu. And if we right click, you'll see that we in fact do. But you can also go ahead and enable the default context menu if you want, just by clicking this button here, and it will automatically turn off the classic one and give you back the Windows 11 one. Now you don't have to restart Explorer to enable the new one, but you do have to restart Explorer to enable the old one. However, this app also gives you the ability to just restart Explorer if you wanted to, just in case something doesn't work the way that it's supposed to, you can go ahead and do that. And then also if you go into the menu section, it gives you some other options and things of that nature too that you can go through and some co command line info. So you can actually use this program to enable or disable the classic context menu from the command line. So you don't even need the GUI to use this program. So if you want to use this program in a script like an auto IT script or something like that, then you can fairly easily and just kind of include this program with your script when you go ahead and use it. But it makes it a pretty decent little program that has only one purpose, to just give you back the classic context menu. Now, as I said before, this app does one thing. It turns on the classic context menu and that's it. Granted though, like I said, you can achieve the same functionality with a simple registry edit. And I'm sure that's all this app does. But sometimes having an app to do the hard work for you absolutely makes your life easier. But you can also just save a registry file that makes it kind of easy too. But the app's still pretty cool. Now, speaking of making your life easier, the next app does exactly that by giving you functionality that I haven't been able to find in any other program on the market. And best of all, this one's free. Let's jump back on the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so the next program we're looking at is a program that I have covered before on this site. It's a program called Fan Control. And this is actually a really robust program. In fact, I don't even have to install this program on this computer because it's already installed. It's running right here in the background because I run this program on every system I have, at least every Windows system I have, because of the power of it. Now, if you go through here, you can see how I have all these controls set up. And essentially, the way you set this up is you have these sensors that tell what's actually happening right now with your different fans and things of that nature. Like for instance, I have this one right here is my pump. It's actually my CPU header on my motherboard, but I renamed it pump because it's what's running my water pump right now. I also have my radiator fan one, two, and three, and these are the three fans that are actually connected to my radiator right now. And I also have my two case fans that are both connected right now. And as you can see, currently my radiator fans are running at 18%. 
percent and my case fans are running at seven percent now if you come down to the bottom right here this is what makes this app so good and this is the functionality that you can get out of it that you can't get out of anything else as you can see i have three different curves set up the first one's for cpu and it essentially gives rules on what it should do if my CPU happens to be at a certain temperature. So as you can see, the minimum temperature is 30 and the maximum temperature is 70. And then it tells which fan speeds you want it to be on based on what those speeds are specifically. Now, as you can see, this one right here is named CPU. Now, the only fans that respond to this specific curve are these ones here for my CPU. And obviously they're my three radiator fans. So I have my radiator fan, my radiator fan one, two, and three connected to the CPU curve. However, as you can see here, my case fans are connected to the case fan curve. So it's a totally different set of rules that I have controlling my case fans. And these ones here are really simple, but they're set up with different minimum temps. And it essentially allows it to change the fans independently of each other. So my case fans can run at a certain speed based on the CPU temperature, then my CPU than my radiator fans do based on those. And then also, if you go down here, I have a completely different rule for my pump. And what my pump does, my pump's minimum temperatures are also different. But this one here, I did this one specifically because I didn't want my pump to drop below 20%. So obviously, I don't want my pump going below 20% because I want it to continue to move water through the system, even if it is at a low temperature. So as you can see with this one right here, I have the minimum temperature set up a little bit higher, and I have the minimum speed to 20%, so it'll never drop below that. And as of right now, because my CPU is at 37 degrees, and the minimum temp is 45 degrees, it's buried down to 20%. So now let's say I take my minimum temperature and I drop this down to 30 degrees. Well, if I do that, then as you can see, it's going to lift up the speed of my pump in order to try to bring that temperature down to 30 degrees. And as you can see, it's actually working. It is dropping it down quite a bit. But on this one right here, I usually keep this one at 45 because it usually works best for my system. But either way, this is a great program to use and I highly recommend getting it, especially if you have a gaming system and you want to have better control over your different fan curves and things of that nature. So even though fan control can be used as a hardware monitor, it's not its primary purpose. Yes, it's very useful in how it shows a temperature reading in the taskbar, and you can I refer to that quite often. In fact, if you go through and look at a lot of my videos, you'll see that little temperature icon in the taskbar because, like I said, it's on every one of my systems. However, the primary purpose for fan control is to give you the ability to adjust your fan speeds based on multiple different scenarios. For instance, it's nice to be able to adjust the speed of your case fans if you're using an application that's very CPU intensive. But what if you're using an application that's not so CPU intensive, but it's GPU intensive and you have your case fans tied to your CPU temperature? Well, fan control will allow you to tie your case fans to your GPU temperature as well. So it'll ramp them up if your GPU gets to a certain temperature also. Having the ability to control your fan speeds individually based on multiple different scenarios comes in really handy. And that's why I'm a fan of fan control. In fact, that's kind of funny. I am a fan of fan control. So with all that said, those are five apps that I highly recommend running with Windows 11. Now, the only one on that list is kind of has a questionable future is Explorer Patcher because Microsoft is going after a lot of these programs that modify the Windows 11 UI. However, Explorer Patcher has always bounced back, even in times when the program got really buggy. It's always been able to somehow get itself fixed figured out. So hopefully Explorer Patcher will get this figured out in the future. So when 24H2 comes out, it'll be ready for prime time. But if you'd like to see me go more in depth with Explorer Patcher, then check out this video where I give a lot more detail than I did in this video. And I honestly can say it's one of my favorite programs for Windows 11. It really is good. Anyway, as always, you guys have a great day.